Good afternoon, or evening, or I think the term we used last year was pre-evening. Merry Christmas Eve to all of you. Welcome to Northwest Hills Church. Uh, if you don't know who I am, I'm Alex Wolf. I'm the pastor here at the church, and I'm glad you have chosen to be with us tonight as we celebrate Christ's birth once again. And so I pray that our evening together is uplifting to your spirit as we sing those familiar carols, as we hear that familiar story, as we welcome Christ into the world once again. I do have uh, just two things to uh, announce before we get started. Uh, just make sure that everybody grabbed a, a bulletin or a program so that we can follow along as needed. Uh, we're not doing the, the screen tonight, so all the lyrics to the carols are in your program, so you don't have to flip through the hymnal and tr struggle to find the page. And uh, a candle for later on in the service when we share Christ's light with one another. So if you don't have those two things, um, sneak to the back sometime early on, grab those if you can, so that you're ready for that part of the service. Uh, we are not having, the second thing I want to say is we are not having any special part of the service where we're collecting offering, so you don't feel obligated to give. But if you would like to give to the, the work of our church, uh, we do have an offering plate in the back by the sound booth. Uh, if you want to uh, drop something off in the plate on your way out, we would be very, very grateful, and uh, thank you for that and your contribution. Are there any other announcements uh, for the good of the fellowship? before we get started. Well, if there are none, I invite the Cups family to come forward and begin our service by lighting the Christ candle. As we celebrate the birth of Jesus and rejoice in his coming to us, we light the Christ candle. The Christ candle shines a great light in darkness, reminding us that Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Together with the other four candles, they remind us that Jesus is our hope. He is our peace. He is our joy. He is our love. Pure, holy, undying love. Whoever believes in him will never perish, but have eternal life. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Thank you, Cups family. And as you are comfortable doing so, would you please rise as you are able and let us join together in our opening carol, O Come, All Ye Faithful.
You may be seated. Let us join together in our unison prayer. Let us pray. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, help us rightly remember the birth of Jesus, that we may share in the songs of the angels, the gladness of the shepherds, and the worship of the Magi. May the good news of Christmas bring us great joy. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite Darwin Barker to come forward with some special music. Thank you, Darwin. 
For our first scripture reading this, this evening, we're reading from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. And in this text, we hear the prophet foretelling of the coming of a Savior. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as men rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of the oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us join together in our next carol, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Our second scripture reading is Psalm 96. This is a responsive reading, so I invite you to follow along in your bulletin and respond with the bold words. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations. His marvelous deeds among all peoples. Praise the Lord, 
For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of nations, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The world is coming to its past. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the sea resound and all that is in it. Let the field be jubilant and everything in them. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his truth. Let us join together in our next carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem. Our gospel reading tonight comes from the gospel according to Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and played him in a ma- placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. 
But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph, and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. At this time, I invite any young or young at heart to join me up front. I'd like to share a Christmas story with you, and I may also have a little gift, but it goes with the story. Is it food? Yes, it is food. You prefer the movie what? The movie, the Christmas story. The Christmas story, the movie. Oh, okay. Hi. Hi, everybody. Come on up. Uh, Well, you know what? Probably this evening, I bet a Christmas story is playing on probably TNT or TBS all night. I have it on DVD, though. You have it on DVD? Well, then you can play it all night whenever you want. Hi. Come on up. How is everybody? Everybody everybody ready for Christmas? Uh All right. Well, I have a gift for you. That goes with our story. What is this? What do you say? Candy cane. All right. Well, I have a candy cane for everyone. Just what you need. Sugar, right? Sugar. Lots and lots of sugar. If there's any left, I will see if there are two, and there probably will be. Yeah. Can you? Thank you for passing that along. Got it. All right. Thank you. All right. All right, James. See that. All right. So for the candy cane, I'm going to, the reason I'm giving this to you is because I'm going to read the story, The Legend of the Candy Cane. Have you ever heard this story before? No? Good. Then I'll get to, would, would you like to, would you like candy cane over there? You want, you want one? We'll get it in a little bit, okay? So I'm going to read this uh, story, The Legend of the Candy Cane. It is by Lori Wahlberg, all right? So I'm going to tr- I'll try to show you the pictures as best that I can. Thank you, James. One dreary evening in the depths of November, a stranger rode into town. He stopped his horse in front of a lonely storefront. The windows were boarded shut, and the door was locked fast. But the man looked at it, smiled, and said, it will do. See, see the picture? Got the store there. It's all closed up. See the picture? You want to see the picture? I know you're kind of far over there. Got the picture? All right. All through the gray short days and the long dark nights of November, the man worked. The townspeople could hear the faint pam, pam, pam of his hammer and the snish, snish, snish of his saw. They could smell the sweet, clean scent of new lumber and the deep, oily smell of new paint. But no one knew what the man was, or who, no one knew who the man was or what he was doing. See there? He's in the, in the store working. See, Mary? See the picture? Sorry, everybody, I should show the picture to you, too. You see it? Might be kind of hard for those in the back. 
The mayor hoped he was a doctor to heal his illness. The young wives hoped he was a tailor to make beautiful dresses. The farmers hoped he was a trader to exchange their grain for goods. But the children had the strongest, deepest wish of all, a wish they did not tell their parents, a deep, quiet secret wish that none of them said out loud. No one spoke to the man. No one asked if he needed help. They just waited and watched and wondered and wished. What do you think, uh, what do you think the, the, the man is doing? Have an idea yet? Yeah? He's what? I say, I say he's like Scrooge. He's like Scrooge? Oh, well, that's an interesting theory. We'll find out, I guess. But one small girl watched and wondered, waited and wished longer than she could stand. And one snowy day, she knocked at the stranger's door. Hello, she said. My name is Lucy. Do you need some help? The man smiled warmly and nodded. Then he opened the door, and Lucy stepped inside. A long counter ran down the side of the room. Bare shelves filled the opposite walls. In the back were dozens and dozens of barrels and crates. Could you help me unpack, the man asked. And there's Lucy there. See, that's Lucy. See Lucy there? All right. Everybody see Lucy? Lucy's heart sank at the sight of all the boxes. What if there were only barrels of nails and bags of flour? But she removed her dripping boots and hung her coat on a peg. On stocking feet, she crossed the rough wooden floor and knelt beside a crate. Please open it, the man urged. Slowly, Lucy put her hand into the box and pulled out an object wrapped in tissue. Round and heavy, it almost slipped through her fingers. Lucy trembled a little as she unwrapped it. Any guesses? Do you think which, what, uh, what, what are in the crates? Any guesses? Anybody? A donkey. No, it was a glass jar. Lucy gave the man a puzzled look. Go on, his nod said. So she unpacked another glass jar and another and another until she was completely surrounded by jars of all shapes and sizes, tall and thin, round and squat, Jars with lids and jars without. Now the man said for something to put inside. And he pulled over a huge crate stamped with a strange word. Okay, so if there are glass jars of all shapes and sizes, what do you think goes in those jars? Money. Maybe. Anybody else think money? <gasps> you think? As Lucy unpacked, her eyes lit up. It was candy. Her favorite candy, gumdrops. Try some, the man said, so she popped one in her mouth. Now she could hardly unwrap fast enough. Peppermint sticks, taffy, lollipops, chewing gum. Wide-eyed, she looked at the man. We wished, Lucy said. Yes, I know, said the man, and here it is. Welcome to Sunniman's Candy Store. I am John Sunniman. Look at all that candy. Whew. Lots of sugar. I bet everybody would love that. Maybe. Soon the small store was filled with candies gleaming in their glass jars, raspberry suckers and tiny lemon drops, brightly colored jawbreakers and long tangles of licorice, pink and white peppermints for church and butterscotch balls for company. Then in the very last package in the very last crate was a candy Lucy had never seen before, a red and white striped candy stick with a crook on the end. What is this? Lu Lucy asked. Yeah, hey, we're getting, we're getting to the to the heart of the story. See, there's the candy store. Got it? All right. This, Mr. Sonneman explained, is a candy cane. It is a very special Christmas candy. Why, Lucy asked. Tell me, Mr. Sonneman said, what letter does it look like? What do you think? What letter does, does the candy cane look like? A J. A C. A, a J. I, I think it's, I'm going to go with J. Is that okay? Lucy said, the, uh, it, it, she said, it was a J. Yes, Mr. Sonneman smiled. J is for Jesus, who was born on Christmas Day. See, he's showing the candy cane. Looks like a J. And yours looks like a J. Who would have guessed? Now, turn it over. What does it remind you of? 
What do you think? A cane. But what, what kind of cane do you think? Candy cane? Well, that, that is what it is. Lucy turned the candy in her hand. She peered down intently. I know, she said finally, it's like a shepherd's staff. Who were the first to find out about Jesus' birth? Mr. Sonneman asked. Shepherds in the field, Lucy answered, watching over their flocks by night. But Mr. Sonneman, what are the stripes for? Lucy asked. The man's eyes grew sad. The prophet Isaiah said, by his stripes we are healed. Before he died, Jesus was whipped and bled terribly. The red reminds us of his suffering and his blood. But then, Mr. Sonneman continued, the candy is white as well. When we give our lives to Jesus, his blood washes away our sins, making us white and pure as snow. And that, he said, is the story of the candy cane. Was it a secret, Lucy asked? Mr. Sonneman looked at her for a long moment. It's a story that needs to be told, he said. Will you help me share it? It was now the depths of December. The town was whipped around by, wizard, by blizzard winds. For days, the sun hid itself. But every morning, Mr. Sonneman and Lucy ventured out. They wore heavy woolen coats and bright hand-knit scarves. And in their stiff, mittened fingers, they each held a bag. They went to every house in town. They traveled to every farm in the county. They knocked on every door. In every home, they told the story. They left a small gift and they gave an invitation. See, you can try, see them traveling in the snow. And they're leaving, leaving a candy cane. On the, on the afternoon of Christmas Eve, the sun finally broke through the clouds, and Sonneman's candy store officially opened. The mayor came, feeling better than he'd felt in days. The young wives came, dressed in beautiful smiles, the farmer came, eager to trade grain for Christmas gifts. The children ran in dizzy circles. Yes, their wish had come true. Yes, they had come to share in the opening of the candy store. But they shared something more, something bigger, something better. See, big celebration in the candy store. On that Christmas Eve, they shared the story of the candy cane. They told of the miracle of Christ's birth, the misery of his death, and the mercy of his love. See? Church on Christmas Eve. And that's the story of the candy cane. So whenever you eat a candy cane, you can think of Jesus and his birth and what he did and his love for us. All right? So hopefully you'll remember that whenever you eat a candy cane. Well, thanks for coming up, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the story, and you can sit back with your families now if you'd like. Hope you have a Merry Christmas. And everybody, if you would like to, we let us join together in our next hymn. I think it's the First Noel. First Noel. Make sure I'm uh, 
on. At this time, I'd like to invite you to join with me in prayer. Almighty God, on this most holy night, we come before you in awe at the wonder and majesty of the Incarnation. The Savior of the nations has come, and with joy we greet our newborn King. Let the proclamation of his birth sound forth throughout the world. May we rejoice and praise your name forever. O God, as we celebrate the coming of your beloved Son, who fully revealed your love for us, help us abound in love for you and for one another. Keep your church and all peoples on the path of love and kindness. O God, as we celebrate the coming of the Prince of Peace, we ask that you usher in your reign of justice and righteousness. There are so many tough situations throughout our world. We ask that you make your incarnate presence known in each situation. And may we as your servants be vessels of your peace. O oh God, as we celebrate the coming of the great physician, may you show compassion upon those who are suffering. May you heal and restore the sick, anxious, and the grieving. We especially lift up those for whom the holidays are not so jolly and bright. May your comforting spirit be with them. God, we also pray the prayers which are too much for us to say aloud. The prayers we may not have words for, but we trust that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us with groans too deep for words. O holy God, we pray all these things in the name of the one who became flesh and dwelt among us, Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray in this way, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us join together in our next carol, Angels We Have Heard on High.
Now we come to, I think, most people's favorite part of the service. The part where we remember Jesus as the light of the world who comes and sheds love and grace and peace and hope to all who will receive it. As we are at Christmas in 2023, the light, I think, is needed, at least, I think, now more than ever. There's a lot of things going on in this world that cause fear, trepidation, concern. But may we always remember that the light shines always, and the darkness has never nor ever will overcome it. Christ has come. May we rejoice. The light is here. As I go, I'll, I'll go down each aisle and light at the end of each, uh, each person at the end of each aisle. And please um, share the light as we go along. And let us join together in the wonderful carol, Silent Night. I know you can't always see it from my perspective, but the light is with, uh, with all of us. The light of Christ is in our hands. May we go forth from this place in joy and hope and love and peace, spreading the light of Christ in all that we do and say. Remember that it will never go out. It always will shine. And as you go forth and shine that light, May the grace and peace and love of our triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you always. May each and every one of you have a very merry and blessed Christmas. May you go in peace and joy. Amen.
to